Hey everyone, Battlecrom here. Today we're going to look at the Precision Farming DLC. I want this to be a quick, man, maybe 15 minute tutorial just to kind of give you the basics and teach you how to use it. Uh, there's plenty of other people out there making videos that are very long and going into great depth. Uh, I'm going to leave out a lot of the detail. I'm going to just give you the meat and the potatoes of exactly how this thing works and how you can use it to maximize your yield. It has a lot of benefits. One of the big benefits of this DLC is it's going to save you money in fertilizing and lime. And I'll show you how to do that next. So let's get into this video. You go right here. You got this little icon right here. This is your precision farming icon. And you got a score. Uh, this is your environmental score right here. So first, one of the first things we need to do here is we need to get the soil information for this farm. That's one of the first things we need to do. Now there's two ways you can do that. You can just purchase it, which honestly, that's the way I recommend doing it. You go into your store, it's in your miscellaneous category. Down here at the end, you got your little scout deal right there for 17,000. This is a sensor right here. You're gonna need these sensors too, but we'll get back to that. Okay, so get the information. You can either do it manually with this little scout right here. Okay, you see down there in the bottom left corner on the mini map, now we wanna take a soil sample. And see, it has a little animation there, taking the soil sample. There we go. Okay, now you see how it turned dark brown? You see that for your whole field, and then you're going to send the uh, soil samples in. Now, alternatively, is you just go over to your map here, and you see I've got it selected. You can just purchase the soil information. It only costs you $2,100 instead of buying that $17,000 piece of equipment and you're still going to have to pay some money to send the soil samples in. Some fields are going to be a little better than others depending on the soil type. But you got equipment that's going to help to adjust for that too. Okay, we got a mulcher right here. This is a modded one. It's a little bit bigger, but faster. We're just going to have a worker mulch this thing down for us real quick. Then we'll plow okay as you can see the field is now mulched now we're going to plow it and the only other thing we're going to do after that is seed it and harvest it we're not doing anything else this test is purely just to see if the plow is going to affect the score at the end and also if it's going to affect the harvest it, because we're going to seed it and harvest it after this uh, next test we're going to mulch it but not plow it and then seed it and harvest it and then we'll see if it makes a difference Okay, we finished harvesting the field. Looks like our environmental score ended up at 45. Now, granted, we're only testing plowing here. I'm gonna show you how to get the environmental score much higher. Okay, now for the test without plowing, we're still gonna mulch it. We're just not gonna plow it and we're gonna seed it. We'll scrape the weeds if we get weeds and then we'll harvest it and we'll compare the results. Okay, we finished harvesting the field. First thing I notice is we have less grain in our tank. That's an interesting development. Our environmental score is at 65. It was at 45 before, so it is 20 points higher. Let's see what changed here. Okay, as far as what changed here, I can see that we control went from 15 to 30, so it doubled. And tillage went from 5 to 10, so it also doubled. Those two things just jumped the environmental score way up. So our yield was 15,472 liters. And now the that we did not plow, we also direct drilled this field, uh, our yield was 13,137 liters. I gotta tell you, it was kind of unexpected, but just looking at that, man, it tells me we gotta plow. You just take the hit on the environmental score on that. I, I don't know how else to see that. Wow. Okay, well, let's continue uh, with the rest of the tutorial here, and let's show you how to get that environmental score as high as we can. Now when you purchase a tractor, if it's any base game tractor, we're just going to pick one here. You're going to see over here you can add this little Isario sensor right here. You need this sensor because the sensor is going to tell your seeder and your fertilizer sprayer and your herbicide sprayer like how much you need to put on uh, for that particular soil type or that particular crop type. Okay, now if you're going to be uh, using Digestate or Slurry or something like that, then you're going to want to get this little add-on right here. What this sensor does is it makes sure that it adjusts for the pockets. For example, uh, 
if you got slurry in this tank, you're going to have some pockets that are going to have more nitrogen than others. This tester is just going to make sure you get even application on your field, and it's going to be more efficient. Okay, getting back to the Azario Compact sensor here, this sensor can only be used during the daytime. Also, some of the modded tractors, you may not be able to do that yet. Eventually, uh, the modders will get that incorporated in there where you'll be able to add that as well. Now, all is not lost though. Uh, if you, you have a modded tractor you wanna use and you can't get the little compact sensor, you can always get this. This will just attach to the front or the back of your tractor. Well, really you wanna put it on the front of your tractor and then have your old fertilizer sprayer behind. And this will do the same thing. Uh, this is actually a little bit better in that you can use this at night. It's not limited to just day use. Um, it could be a better alternative for you because you know then you don't have to buy the compact sensor for every tractor you have. If you got a whole lot of tractors, you can just grab this for whichever tractor you're using at that moment. You know, if you want to use a different tractor to spray your field. And you can grab this you don't have to have that little compact sensor on every tractor and you can use it for day and night so you know depending on i don't know i guess how many tractors you have and how you want to play the game this actually could be a better alternative for you environmental score starting out at 58 let's go ahead and uh, go ahead and mulch this field and then we'll go from there okay now we got to get our ph levels right and this is where precision farming really shines. It's going to do this more efficiently. It's going to make better efficient use of our lime and our fertilizer. So pH is lime, nitrogen is fertilizer. Right now, we're going to set our pH levels. Again, this is where precision farming shines because it's going to save you on lime. Lime, I know, is not too expensive, but fertilizer is. It's going to save you there too. So we can put this down before we put in the seeds because it doesn't need to know what crop you have on the ground to get the pH levels right. It just needs to know what kind of soil you have. Okay, again, we got it on automatic uh, sensing. You see up there in the top. You can you can deactivate the automatic, but I don't know why you would. I mean, I, I can't, I'm sure there's probably a reason why you'd want to deactivate it. I just can't think of one. With automatic on, it's gonna lay down just the perfect amount of lime to get you your highest environmental score. Okay, now we're gonna seed it using the direct drill method. Uh, you wanna seed it before you fertilize it. Otherwise, it's not gonna know how much nitrogen to put on because it, the nitrogen, the amount of nitrogen it puts on is specific to the type of crop that you're planting. Okay, after I seed the field, I did roll the field, uh, but now we can fertilize it. And this, with the sensor on there, you wanna leave it automatic Again, just always leave it on automatic. Don't deactivate that. Leave it on automatic. It will automatically sense how much nitrogen that this field needs for the particular seed I have planted, which in this case is wheat. But it will depend. You know, if you have, I don't know, sorghum planted or corn, it may require different nitrogen levels. This will automatically sense that. And again, it's more efficient. You won't waste uh, any fertilizer this way. And the best part about it you don't have to fertilize the field one time. It's gonna automatically lay down the right amount of fertilizer I need for my wheat crop, and I'm only gonna need to fertilize it one time. There's no second fertilization required. Okay, so the field's not plowed. We are going to get weeds, and this is the device we're gonna use here for the weeds. This is the R732i Power Spray by John Deere. This is part of the mod. Uh, we want to turn seat and spray on. Uh, I did use this with the uh, plow test already, but I don't know if that footage is even going to be in there. But see, it gives us our little, yeah, it's got a little device here that, that spot sprays basically where the weeds are. So it, it's going to be even more efficient and save even more uh, herbicide when you got to get rid of your weeds. Okay, we're back. And as you can see, we now have weeds. So we have our thing in here. We got a little compact sensors on the tractor. And we are using the John Deere with the spot and spray technology on it. And we're going to spray uh, the herbicide on this field. And it's going to be pretty neat when you see this happen. 
something because it's only going to spur here right where the weeds are. Here you're going to make another pass here and look at that thing. Look at it just spraying down right on the weeds. <laughs> That's fantastic, isn't it? Look at that. I love that. That looks so cool. Yes, our bio environmental score has updated somewhat, but it hasn't updated completely. Not everything is updated. Uh, weed control is looking pretty good right now because we are swap spraying, even though we're not done yet. The soil sampling, we got full bonus. Tillage, we got full bonus. These will come into play after uh, we harvest, though, and then we'll get to see our final environmental score. So don't panic if it looks too low to you right now. You're not going to be able to see the final score until you harvest. All right, let's get it harvested, and then we'll look at the final result. All right, let's look at our final result here. Looks like we got 20,000 liters of wheat out of this field. That's pretty good. Okay, this is the this is the final on our environmental score. So we tacked that sucker at 99. I mean, <laughs> that looks pretty good to me. I don't know if you can really get it much higher than that. And you can see how it filled in now for our nitrogen and pH, like I said, it would at the end. We basically just pegged everything up, all the way up and down the board there. Uh, the pH is looking pretty good, because the pH, you know, is kind of like the, we lined it, and you, you normally only need to lime a crop about every, you know, three times, well, so the pH still looks pretty good. Nitrogen took a big hit, we suck a lot of nutrients out of the soil there, so for the next crop, you know, we will need to fertilize it again. If you got a field that's made almost entirely of loam and sandy loam, then it, that field is going to end up ultimately yielding you more than, say, a field like this one, which was just full of this silty clay. It was terrible soil. But anyway, yeah, that's uh, that about sums it up there. All right, everyone, appreciate you watching. Uh, I hope this tutorial was helpful for you. Uh, it was pretty helpful for me. Uh, it did raise a few questions though for me as far as the uh, plowing goes. <laughs> I may have to do uh, a little more exploration on that. I'm not too sure why we got the results we got on that, but it was interesting to say the least. But uh, hey, I appreciate you watching and uh, we'll see you next time.